Hey guys, welcome back to another Fur Friday. It feels like it's been forever since I've done one and it probably has, but time is just like melding one day into another. I don't actually know what day of the week it is. I just know that I've managed to throw Coffee Man out with the girls for mm, about half an hour. So I'm hoping I can get something down for you guys, fingers crossed. So today is going to be how to draw white fur in graphite. Most of the tutorials I have done so far have been with coloured pencil, but I'm going to mix them up a bit and I'm going to start doing ones with graphite, watercolour, acrylic, gouache, and we're going to mix up the medias that we use. But the techniques generally don't change with regards to how we achieve the end goal. This week is based on my old dog who is now living with my sister because of health reasons, unfortunately, she had to go and find a new home. She loves it up there. She's um, up in Scotland and she is a Samoyed cross German Shepherd and she's completely white and she's beautiful. And a lot of people struggle on how to actually draw white fur with graphite. So that's the point of today is to show you what we're gonna do. So you're gonna need a 2B, a HB, and a 4B. They're the main colors that we're gonna be using. You're gonna need a way of blending. So either a tissue, a stubby, a cotton bud, whatever you find preference. Um, and then you're gonna need a fine eraser. Um, I always like to use my Mono Zero. If you are after looking at getting a fine eraser, these are perfect. They're really, really good. And they're like 2.3 mil wide, so these are a really really good option to have they're not very expensive to get the actual pen and then you just buy the refills as and when you run out of eraser so unlike colored pencil actually with graph white you can start from your darkest area and move into your light and we use the darkest areas to provide us with extra graphite to then fill the space but i'm just going to show you the difference i'm going to do a very light layer just in the top corner here and that is a 4h you'll find uh, 4b apologies and you'll find that the further up the b's you go the softer they are that is a 2b and this is a hb so you can sort of see as we start to move down h stands for hard b stands for black so we're going to start with our 2b and we've got a little bit of eye here because it's difficult to show you um it can look very i don't even know how to it looks out of context when you're drawing just these small squares but for time purposes it's much easier to do them in these small squares for you guys to get a feel of one how to use your tools how to work with graphite and just these small studies are great to so we get you familiar with how it works really you'll be able to see i've popped up a picture of the one that i am working from and you can see actually how much i've zoomed in to the reference to get to this section so i'm always blocking out using the 2b and it helps it not to be too light but it also helps for me not to go too dark too quickly because you can build up graphite shine very easily when you work with this medium so just bear that in mind so around the eyes we always do a little bit of soft blending and we leave any areas that need to be white or pale completely empty i'm only drawing in the darkest areas on her fur what it then means is when i come with my blender i can then blend out into the lighter areas and it saves me a job of actually having to use my pencil so i'm just popping in a little bit of detail there with her sort of eyelashes above her eye but that's where the fine eraser comes into play a bit later because we need to get those fine details in any type of eraser you're happy with but you really ideally need something with a sharp point So now I've worked out where I need my darkest areas to be. I can come in now with my 4B. I've managed to create a wedge on mine, so it's actually got quite a sharp tip on the edge. So I do recommend working with sharp pencils. So I'm now just going to sweep in with my stubby or tor tortillon, I don't know how you pronounce it, but and I'm gonna work from my darkest area and blend out into my lighter areas. 
and you can use it as almost like a secondary type of pencil like a really soft pencil and it's a really really good way of saving you time and getting some of your base down um, so pretty much all of back of this side somehow I've managed to get a pen mark I think it is on that bit of paper um, so that's unfortunate and we're gonna have to work around that but if I then go in and I can just take all the excess from previous drawings I have done and I can use that to colour in and block in where my dark areas are going to be. So it, it does, I recommend not cleaning these too often, try and keep them pretty grubby. <laughs> and it really does help even if you want a clean one maybe just keep one that's permanently got stuff on it and then keep one that you sharpen or, or clean every now and then so it's worth having a couple of options so we're now going to work just because we want to keep our paper clean from the top right hand side so i can pretty much fill that whole space so this is essentially going to be our mid-tone. So if I then wanted to add any highlight, I would grab my eraser and I would pop in where I know those highlights are gonna be now. And then that way it makes it much easier later on. And then when I come in with my darker pencil, so again, we're gonna go in with the 2B because we don't wanna go in too heavy. And I'm just gonna do a gentle layer of graphite. And as we come into where the highlights we're going to start leaving negative space so negative space means that i'm leaving a gap in between to create a natural highlight without then constantly having to go in with the eraser and trying to erase highlights instead of adding them before it's much much easier to add your highlights as you're drawing than try and add them afterwards so I can now grab my stubby, as I like to call it, and blend that out. And you'll still have some pencil lines left, which helps give you a bit of depth to your fur. We're just gonna blend that all the way out. You might be able to hear the birds. My office door is open at the moment. So if you hear any nature sounds, now I'm going to grab my HB because I don't want anything too heavy, but we need to get a few details of fur in there. And I'm just doing that by lifting my pencil as I get to the end of the fur detail that I want to add. And then I'm going to come back into the other direction. And that way we can add a little bit of detail and I'm adding more detail than there actually is in the photo because as I say I am very much zoomed in but these are the techniques that you would use when you come to do your drawings so now what we're going to do is we're going to build up that shadowing underneath I'm just going to shade over and what I'm going to do is first thing I'm going to go and sharpen it rather than my pencil being upright like this I'm going to tilt it so it's closer towards the paper so rather than getting this motion we are going to get this motion or effect and try and work rather than go backwards and forwards although I've managed to get the knack of it I've been doing it so long because when you go backwards and forwards that's where you end up with the pencil lines try and do a series of ovals if possible and the more you practice this the closer you'll get together and the tighter your ovals will become and you'll end up being able to get this natural um, soft blend as you're working so we're going to do that and we're just going to darken the shadow areas and now i'm going to come over to this side and start adding in the shadow area in there too when you're doing fair it's not so much of an issue to have some pencil lines showing because it's giving you the detail of the fur but certainly when you're doing portraits of people or you need to do 
um, the eye, things like that, you really need to have much more of a, a smoother blend. So I'm just gently working in all the areas I want it to be darker and I'm just going to pop some fur direction because it comes from the eye and it curls from about 10 o'clock up to 2 o'clock. So that's the curve I need to get on my subject here. You need to look at your reference, whichever one you decide to do, and just make sure that you're checking in on those details and the direction of the fur, because it's the importance of the direction that helps give you realism as well. If you go in the wrong direction or you're too straight, it can look very flat and it doesn't quite come together like you would expect it to. So this tip of the section here, the patch here, needs to be quite light. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to use my 2B still and I'm going to come up from the dark and flick into where the lighter areas are. And I'm going to make sure a few cross over. And that ensures that we get much more of a natural fur texture. And then we'll eventually come back and blend all of that together. So we've technically got two layers for our undercoat, which gives you like the base of your fur. So when you're looking at fur, it looks very dense and very thick. And certainly on Suki, she had extra, she does have extremely thick fur. So you need to have these layers in between to give you the depth that you need to create this really soft, fluffy feeling. So she's got a little bit of a darker patch in here. And around her eye, we've got a darker patch in here. So we always get that sort of crossover, nearly on most animals, where the fur sits. But you can see how gentle I'm being while I'm applying this pencil and not being rough. I'm not pressing hard. I'm keeping my motions very loose and very fluid. And it's practicing this sort of motion that really helps you get to grips with your tools as well. So now we've got more detail down, we're going to get our blending study or your blending tool of choice. And then we're just going to blend that out and soften those edges. This is really why graphite is a much faster medium to render up because you don't have to spend quite as much time getting the blend out because it's the tool sort of do it for you. brush all that down in here too and we're gonna I don't want to leave any paper white so I'm gonna come over where that highlight will sit I'm gonna keep blending until I'm happy that everything is distributed where I want it to be And then we can really start to then work on getting some detail in. So I'm going to grab my 4B again and we're going to work on some detail in this section. I'm going to grab my HB, I think. And we're going to add some fine detail in the eye there. And then we need to be much darker and start to create that shape that she has. So you'll be really looking at your reference and working out where you want all your highlights, where they all need to be, making sure everything is in the right place. You need to extend this shadow area, or dark fur I should say, as it's not actually a shadow. And then I'm going to grab my little HB and my little HB is going to give me some really fine, sharp, dark sections and shadows in the fur. And this is the joy of using a H pencil is because it is nice and hard. You can get some really nice, firm, 
really quite um, detailed information in your drawing without it then being too light. If you wanted to, you can go down to a 2H. But I find if you just take the pressure off your pencil a little bit with your HB, you can actually achieve a, a very, very similar effect. So we're just going to get some more detail in on these highlighted areas. Again, helping us gain control over the fur direction. We need some more little details in here. starting to add these up a little bit and there's little various patches of shadows which are a bit stronger than other places and it's these that you want to then just very gently add these in and you can add these in with your HB so I'm currently still have my HB in my hand because if you don't want to go too dark using a H pencil really does help So I can carry on to blend over the top and because we've done that layering underneath it's sort of done a lot of the work for us let me just flick into where that highlight is create small little curves to show fair direction So we'll build up on this in a moment with our eraser too and erasers and graphite creating highlights is, is such a good method it works really really well but if you build up and try and add some of those highlights in as you go again it makes it much more natural looking so I'm just now going to go and emphasize some of where the main shadows sit To darken in here a little bit more again I am going backwards and forwards but I am still doing it in an oval motion and I am doing it in the third direction so I'm just identifying some of the main shadows we need to apply each time I've got a lean on my pencil so I do this very gently rather than it being a very strong so I can now get my blending stubby and we can go over again and soften all of those out again because we are so zoomed in on the reference photo I've added a bit more detail than there actually is in the photo. The photo is very smooth and very almost out of focus because of how close we are. But Just keep blending until you're happy. And then what we are going to do is grab our eraser and from the highlight area we're going to flick out into the dark and that gives us that nice lift off at the end which helps towards sort of the fine end of the fur detail. So we can just add a few in here and there just to give us the extra height and contrast. just helps to blend it all out sorry for any random noises you are hearing my den door is open so and I'm even going to do it in here because we're again patching over and it just it really does add to the depth of the fur so it helps to create the shapes that you see in your reference 
by doing it this way. So I know that on here we need to just angle that highlight out a bit more so we can bring actually this out more like so. And everything else is pretty much an even par with regards to the shading so we can just keep going if you want to add any more detail. I am going to just get some more detail in this bit here. very thin highlight in here but I don't want it to be too white and then I've got to just finish that bit you'll find the more you build up the more areas you'll see that you want to come back to and that's fine I always find when I've done something, I um, leave it a few hours, then I'll come back to it and I may be able to see things that ordinarily I didn't see before. And it's worth doing because it then helps you sort of pick out maybe areas that weren't quite dark enough or light enough or the shape is wrong. There would be areas, if you had the whole reference, where actually some would be probably much brighter than this or again much darker than this. So it, it can look very odd when we're doing it at this size because it doesn't look relative um, to any of, you know, we don't have the rest of the subject to compare it to. So it can be a bit tricky, but as I say, for time's sake for you guys, for you to just get a good idea of how to at least get started, these are worth doing at these at these size so we're gonna have one more little blend out here just to soften these bits of detail another blend out just back here And then what we're going to do is grab either a kneaded eraser or you can grab a bit of blue tack, whatever you have. Mine's getting a bit grubby now, but this is a kneaded eraser. And I'm just going to form a sort of long, thin eraser. And what we want to do is create much more of a softer highlight. So I can go in and I can just rock it through where I've done and it gives me a much softer blend over the highlights the Tombow is fantastic for really nice fine details but when you want something that's maybe you can see it's taken off the graphite where you want something that's maybe not quite so harsh you just want a much softer blend then this is ideal so what I'm going to do now is I am going to come in and I'm going to start brushing in different directions this highlighted area and I think we can on this side actually come in a bit darker it's almost got like three steps of shade to it and I'm just gonna blend that out I'm very softly and I'm not going to have too much texture I'm just going to go over and add some texture with the kneaded eraser and that gives me some texture on the fur and then I can come back in and just blend again in the direction of the fur So that gives you um, a very sort of basic and quick idea. You can spend much more time on yours than I have, but I wanted to give you the basics and the beginnings of doing fur in graphite, especially white fur, as it can be tricky. 
Um, if you have any requests of the types of fur that you'd like to see in future videos or even a medium that maybe I am not or haven't covered yet, please don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section below and I would be happy to try and accommodate as much as I can um, sort of any requests that I have and yeah it's just to really give you a feel of getting used to and getting started. I'm just going to zoom out for you so you get a bit of an idea of what it looks like and we are now going to peel this away as it gives you again a better view and again we're not drawing it in context so it can look a bit confusing um, and yes there is a timeline continuity error because I forgot to do this before I said goodbye so um, yeah you'll see the tape back on in a moment <laughs> um, but I wanted you to see this once we had the tape removed and I have zoomed out and it probably will make much more sense to you so there you have it guys back to the future if you have any questions please come and find me either on my instagram or my facebook page and i will do what i can i also have a tiktok account now where i do live tutorials on there as well um but that's pretty much it from me for this fur friday so don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more of these in the future i have plenty of videos that you can have a look through currently and yeah don't forget to hit the notification for all that little bell icon because i go live near enough every wednesday with a tutorial of some kind or we'll just have a get together and a nice little chat and a cup of coffee and just art along really so yeah if you've enjoyed this don't forget to hit that thumbs up as it really does help the old algorithms and happy drawing have a good afternoon morning evening whichever it may be guys and i shall see you in the next video bye